Welcome to Vermont Voices. I'm Cherise Madigan, and today we're joined by Faisal Gill, who is the leader of the Vermont Democratic Party. Faisal has a long history in politics and is the first Muslim head of a state party in the nation. Faisal, thank you so much for joining me today. And could you start by telling me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, first, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Uh, so I'm um, uh, chair of the Vermont Democratic Party. As you said, I've been involved for a while. You know, I moved to Vermont not too long ago, about uh, five years now almost, and was got involved in politics and kind of was in the local town committee, and then the county committee, and then uh, the opportunity came to run for the state party chair, so I did that. I've also run for uh, state senate in Vermont as well. It wasn't successful, but it was good. <laughs> That's great. And tell me a little bit about your history with the Republican Party and why you decided to become a Democrat. Yeah, so I uh, started off with the Republican Party, and you know, after a while, you start to look at that the Republican Party philosophy and the Republican Party uh, issues just aren't working. I mean, I did run as a Republican a while in Virginia, and uh, you know, just ran across a bunch of. Uh, racism and um, just negative attitudes there. Uh, so that was that was a little bit interesting, you know, to face that. And you don't uh, you don't think that the Republican Party is going to be like that, but you know, people say it is, and I experienced it firsthand. So I don't want to be associated with a party like that. But more importantly than that, it was just their issues. It's just their philosophy just is not working. Absolutely. And how did you become a Vermonter? What drew you here? Uh, Vermont, basically. Uh, you know, I was living on the West Coast in uh, California, and I wanted to move back to the East Coast. And I started to look around as where I wanted to be. I didn't want to be in the city again, like D.C. or New York or anything like that. And so I started to look around to see where I wanted to settle. And uh, Burlington area was just great. Uh, my work is in D.C., so I can travel back and forth fairly easily. So just Vermont itself. That's great. And what do you like about Vermont? What do you think our strengths are as a state? I think the biggest strength of Vermont is the people. I mean, the people are just fantastic. They're very resilient. They help each other out. They're very honest. They're open. They'll tell you good and bad. I mean, you know, sometimes it's not, sometimes it's not good to hear. But, uh, you know, they're very honest, and they'll tell you that. So I think the strength of Vermont is the people. And then, of course, the natural beauty is just gorgeous. You know, driving, I drove uh, from um, Chittenden County down here, and it was just beautiful to drive. Oh, absolutely. It's hard to beat. And politically, where do you think our state has room to grow? Um, so politically, I think right now we're in a very interesting time. There's a lot of energy out there. You know, the best thing that uh, the um, 2016 elections have done is basically galvanized everybody and energized everybody um, to do something, spur into action. Now the issue is, what do we do? I mean, we have issues in Vermont, you know, whether it be health care, higher education, uh, climate change, all these issues, and I think people are just tired of the status quo and uh, not doing anything about that. Now they're really demanding that something be done on all those fronts. Absolutely. And why did you decide to run to lead the state Democratic Committee? My, um, the opportunity came up and I thought that I could, you know, come in and basically um, I have a vision. Uh, again, I, when I ran for state Senate, the issues that I ran on were tax reform and higher education. Um, I think time has come, as you know, Senator Sanders talks about, that college needs to be free. I mean, it's it has to be that way because um, it's not fair that some people are graduating from college with a, with a huge amount of debt and others are not. Yeah. And college is so essential for just to dealing with those issues. I felt it was time um, to start addressing those issues head on, and I thought I could, uh, you know, be effective in that. That's great. And what was the experience of running that campaign like? Um, it was good. It was good. I mean, you know, as I said, I'm filling an interim term that uh, the previous chair uh, resigned, so I'm filling that. And there was just one other person who ran, and you know, he ran a spirited campaign, and it was, it was good. Um, so it was good. That's great. And there's been a lot of national attention on you as the first Muslim head of a state party in right. the nation. What has that experience been like and that sudden influx of attention? Yeah, no, I think it's uh, it's a good thing. Right now, I tell everybody that folks who are Muslim Americans, you know, they need to be out there. And I've never really worn my religion on my sleeve or really, you know, tried to highlight that fact. But in this day and age, when you've got the President of the United States trying to, you know, uh, divide us and trying to say that Muslim Americans are somehow not um, uh, patriotic or should be, you know, worried about or anything like that. I think it's important for people to see that, you know, Muslim Americans are just like everybody else and they're involved in their community, they're involved in their state, involved in their party, and there's really no difference. So 
I think it's important. A lot of times it comes from ignorance. You know, people just don't know yeah. that their neighbor is, you know, Muslim or uh, they don't ask because, as rightly so, they shouldn't. I mean, nobody, you know, religion is a personal thing. But right now, the times that we're in, I think it's important for people to know, oh, wow, he is fastal as Muslim. Okay. He's involved in all of our regular issues like everybody else. Yeah, that's great. And have you found support in Vermont? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. People are people are just fantastic here. I mean, they, uh, you know, they. I have not really experienced anything for the religion. I mean, you know, you have some who don't know you and don't know what to think. And the best way I've always broken down barriers is just talk to everybody and you know be upfront and just discuss everything out. That's great. And I know you said you haven't really faced much in terms of your religion, but have yeah. you faced any other types of discrimination? Because Vermont is progressive, but also largely white. Uh, it is, it is. I mean, you know, discrimination is very hard to tell if you're facing this day and age or not, yeah. because the days of, you know, somebody calling you a name or somebody, uh, you know, uh, telling you to sit somewhere, those are gone. But now you have a little bit different sort. So now you'll have, you know, people not knowing how you are, coming up with different issues. I mean, yeah, I have people who are looking into my background or who, you know, say, oh, well, Fassel did this or Fassel did that, things like that. And and you want to wonder, well, did any other Democratic Party chair ever go through that level of scrutiny? Then I, why am I? And, yeah. But I, I try to keep positive and I go, okay, it's just out of ignorance and that's it. That's great. And what do you hope to accomplish during your leadership of the Democratic Party? I've got a few things that I want to accomplish. You know, the biggest thing is I want to harness all this energy that w that exists right now with various groups into, you know, something that's positive for actual change. And, and as I said, the issues that we've talked about are significant issues and are not going to change overnight. But we do need to, you know, we do need to do something about health care and something about education, climate change, tax reform. And I'm hoping to gather all the people there to uh, make some changes there, as well as, you know, have the Democratic Party have a, have a uh, philosophy and a vision again. I mean, it's had one. You know, people always ask me, what does a Democratic Party stand for? And I say, yeah, it's the same party that stood for from FDR down to JFK, down to LBJ, you know, the Clintons. I mean, the party stands for looking out for someone who needs to be looked out for, you know, helping the middle class, helping people get into the middle class. And sometimes I think in the last few years, the party has lost a little bit, I don't know, that identity, but they haven't, um, you know, they haven't said it clearly. And I think right now they need to say it clearly. So I'm hoping to do that. I'm going to have community forums uh, all over the state of Vermont great. and talking about big issues. I want it to become an activist party. That's great. And you mentioned an activist party. A lot of Vermonters were big supporters of Bernie Sanders and are kind of resentful of his treatment by the DNC. How do you hope to kind of balance that political divide in the state? Well, I think Senator Sanders, Bernie Sanders has done a great uh, service to the Democratic Party. I mean, he's kind of called out what, where the party needs to change, and I think that's fantastic. Uh, we had our annual dinner uh, just last week, mm -hmm. and the Democratic Party's annual dinner, Senator Sanders was the keynote speaker there, and he came and he spoke and he talked about what the Democratic Party needs to do to change. And I think that he's absolutely right. On the federal level, on the national level, I think uh, the DNC is realizing that what it did last time did not work and where the energy is, and I think they're taking steps to change it. Hopefully they'll continue to take steps to change it. But, you know, to me, I mean, in Vermont, Senator Sanders has always been there for the Democrats, no matter, you know, back when Governor Shumlin was running to other folks that run to Sue Minter last year. He's always been there. So uh, he's been great to the Democratic Party in Vermont. Now I think that nationally, He's doing a great service by calling out the Democratic Party for what, you know, the losses that it had. Absolutely. And Vermont's pretty well known as well for having Lieutenant Governor Zuckerman, who is a member of the Progressive Party, even though he ran as a Democrat. Right. Um, and he's mentioned before that the Democratic Party may need to shift ideologically a little bit to right. account for that large progressive population in the state. How do you understand that? Well, I mean, uh, you know, first thing I'd say is I, I think David Zuckerman is a Democratic and a progressive yeah. <laughs> lieutenant governor. So I, you know, I certainly claim him as a Democratic lieutenant governor. Yeah. But yeah, no, there, there has been. And I think that's where I think I can really help because I wasn't here in Vermont for some of the more challenging times between the Democratic Party and the Progressive Party. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of coming new in this. And that's sometimes in a, you know, fresh set of eyes are good. Uh, I'm working with the Progressive Party uh, wherever I can. Uh, anybody who runs as a fusion candidate like David Zuckerman or Chris Pearson, I mean, I welcome them into the party. I treat them as democratic and make sure that, you know, all their, um, they're treated as democratic and there's no difference between them. That's wonderful. Uh, 
And on the Trump administration, going to the national level, yes. what are your views on his administration or the policies that he's put in place, like his immigration policies? I think they're horrible. I mean, immigration policy is something, look, nobody wants to, nobody's saying you should violate the law, but what the Trump administration is doing right now is not enforcing the law, it's just mean-spirited. I mean, you know, you enforce a law to protect people for the good of the public. You know, in uh, Burlington area, um, ICE agents have been following folks who are going to court to take care of various issues and arresting them at that time. I mean, that's just not following the law. That's mm -hmm. absolutely, that's ridiculous. Uh, I think the courts have done a good job of basically coming out and saying that the Trump policies are just, you know, in hate and are unconstitutional. Uh, I think our Attorney General T.J. Donovan has done a good job of taking on Trump uh, nationally by filing lawsuits and joining lawsuits and that stuff. So it, it, there is no reason for why Trump is doing what he's doing except for he wants to keep a certain segment of the population out, which I think is divisive. Absolutely. And on the state level, what can the Democratic Party do in pursuance of your goals, considering the national context? We're doing everything we can in the sense of, you know, we're supporting groups like Migrant Justice, um, we, uh, in immigration, uh, we're, you know, um, I uh, was fortunate enough to be on the Attorney General's Task Force on Immigration uh, to figure out what the state policies can be, uh, wherever we can find a way to fight it, as well as looking out for the budget. Um, you know, if the Trump budget goes into place, maybe not now and after October, we're going to need to make sure that we are uh, well suited to fight some of those challenges that Trump puts for us. Absolutely. And as someone who's been a member of the Republican Party in the past, do you feel especially well positioned to kind of cross the aisle? I think so. I think you know, the biggest problem that we have right now is understanding why the other person thinks the way they do. And, yeah. you know, Bernie's done a great job of that by going to West Virginia, going to Kentucky, going to some areas and talking to Republicans and not talking down to them, but basically, you know, understanding why they feel. So I understand why the Republicans uh, feel the way they do. You know, the key is to show them how their policy is not working uh, without being judgmental. Absolutely. And how does that kind of embody in the state level? Um, we've got a great issue right now going on with the governor potentially having a veto. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of folks out there, Republicans, who feel, hey, saving $26 million is a great thing. So why not have the schools uh, negotiate statewide? The problem with that is it erodes collective bargaining. It kind of gets rid of collective bargaining. It erodes local control of the schools. So is saving $26 million a bad thing? No. Are there folks who want to do that? Are they bad? No. But you have to explain to them, do you really want local control to go? Do you really want Montpelier to um, decide on you know, health care contracts? And then where do you stop? First, you're, the teachers are negotiating health care benefits at the state level. Next, they'll be negotiating salaries. Next, other benefits. Pretty soon, you're going to have one school district. And then what happens if the people don't agree, if the state and the teachers union don't agree? Are you talking about a statewide teacher strike? I mean, it, you know, it makes no sense. So that's how I would explain it to folks to say an idea that sounds good maybe is not good when you actually put it in practice without, again, being judgmental. Absolutely. And what do you see as the future of the Vermont Democratic Party going forward? I think the party has just got to become a very activist party. They have to be out there. They have to address serious issues. They can't, uh, you know, they can't speak in uh, uncertain terms. You know, we have to look at see how we're going to solve health care costs, how we're going to solve the issue of higher education, tax reform. I mean, these are all very difficult issues and there are no easy solutions to these issues but we have to have the discussion and we have to basically tell people the truth that look some of these might require raising revenues i mean it's you know but we're going to do it in a in a in a smart manner we're going to do it in a manner that does not hurt folks uh, but we are going to do it in a manner that helps people healthcare costs we need to control them absolutely and you mentioned an activist party quite a quite a few times yeah. how is that going to be in reality i know you said you want to go around the state as an individual but right. Uh, the way we get activist party is getting people involved in their mm -hmm. local issues. So instead of just coming out and voting on election day or town meeting day, yeah. be active the entire time. You know, make sure your legislator knows you know where you feel on those issues. Uh, it, it could require everything from making phone calls to demonstrations to uh, being just aware of the issues uh, to coming out to community forums to understanding. Okay, if I want single payer or Medicare for all, this is what it requires. Are we there? Are we not there? Uh, how do we get there? And things like that. But it, it's going to require involvement from the citizenry. It just can't be the legislators doing it in Montpelier without knowing where the citizens are. Okay.
And that being said, what are the top issues that citizens of Vermont should really be active about at the moment? I mean, right now, people are just, wherever I go, people are caring about the national issue, the Trump agenda, yeah. making sure to stop the Trump agenda. And what I try to tell them is we have many issues at state as well. Uh, you know, health care, I think, is a big issue that people mm -hmm. want to talk about. Education is a big issue. Education funding, making sure property taxes are a big issue that people are concerned about. Uh, tax reform in general. Uh, and climate change. Climate change is a huge issue that people are concerned about. So those are all the issues. You know, unfortunately, we're just at a time where we can't pick one over the other. We kind of have to tackle just about everything at the same time because people are just tired of their health care costs going up, you know, working so hard, not having a, a, a livable wage. I mean, minimum wage is another issue that I think people want. Mm -hmm. Family leave. So there's a lot of issues that people need to get active on. And the challenge for the Democratic Party is to basically make sure that we are there for all of those needs. Absolutely. And how can local communities kind of show their support for that as a community um, besides getting out and voting? I think the best thing the community can do is, you know, hold group sessions, basically. Okay. And we have to have realistic expectations. I'm not expecting 40, 50, 60 people to show up. You know, I'm going to be speaking at Castleton at a small group, Indivisible, and the lady who's the head of it, she called me and she said, hey, I hope you don't mind. We might have 12 to 24 people. And I said, no, that's fantastic. That's great because you can have a real conversation. And I think all throughout the communities, each community needs to start having a conversation of saying, I mean, again, for example, Single payer. If we want single payer, it's going to require potential revenue raises. Is the community okay with that? Do we want that? If not, then what is the alternative? Involve your legislators. You know, bring them in and say, oh, okay, how do we get to this? But having these conversations and putting all those issues out on the table, that's the only way we're going to solve those issues. So when next year, when the legislature is back in session, that legislator going there knows exactly where the community stands. Absolutely, and I agree with you that that dialogue is so important. How would someone who's watching this program and maybe you know a Republican or a conservative or even further right, how would you recommend that they get involved in the process as well so we end up with a, a broader picture? Well, we're going to do a couple of things from the party level. We're going to give opportunity for folks. So we're going to start having community forums all around the state, including Manchester, as to where people can get involved. But besides that, just call your friends. If you're sitting at home watching this program, you've got five, six friends, seven friends, ten friends, call them. You know, meet on a Sunday, meet on an after work one time, and just have a discussion. Those friends have five more friends who have five more friends. It's like a spider web effect. And that's what you need to do just to bring them in on a community. And it doesn't have to be one giant session where you've got 50 people coming to one event. You know, you meet once for, with 10, 20 people. Then you have another group of 10, 20 people meeting on another issue and another group and just having these dialogues. And I encourage people to have um, uh, people of all political spectrum. You know, mm -hmm. have Republicans in as well. I mean, we're in, that's the beauty of Vermont. We live in a small town. Everybody knows everybody else. Invite the Republicans over. Listen to them. Yeah. Don't judge them. Let's not have any, you know, uh, negative feelings here. Basically say, okay, if you think property taxes are the most, you don't think we should raise the minimum wage, why don't you think we should raise the minimum wage? Let's listen to each other and basically discuss it that way. Absolutely. That's great. Anything else that you'd like to add about the future of the Democratic Party or your role? No, I, I, I keep saying activists. I think people will see that the Democratic Party is going to be in their towns a lot more, and we're not doing it at a top-down effect, you know. I have no desire to come to the town and say, hey, this is the forum you should be looking at. This is what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm working with the Bennington County Committee. I'm going to be working with local town committees as well to say, what is an issue that's important in Manchester? What do people want to talk about? And if, if they say, oh, it's this issue, it's health care or education or tax reform, then my job is to bring resources to it, you know, bring some experts in that field, come there and basically say, okay, we can talk about this issue. Thank you so much for joining me tonight, Faisal. To learn more about Mr. Gill or the Vermont Democratic Party, read our column in the Manchester Journal next Friday. This has been Vermont Voices, linking the local to the national. Have a great night.